Jonathan from Rain Brothers here, rainbrothers.com. Today I wanted to go over the importance of a pressure tank in your pumping system. And this is regardless if you're on a well or on a cist rain cistern system. This is actually my own house and uh, we moved in here um, about a year ago and early on I, I knew that I wanted to make this upgrade. Um, we wanted to upgrade to a larger pressure tank. And there are several reasons to do this. Uh, the most important is that it, electrically it's much more efficient to have a larger pressure tank, and I'll go over why in a second. And two, your pump will last a lot longer because the pressure tank is actually what controls the start-stop cycles and the frequency of start-stop cycles on your pump motor. So the larger the pressure tank, the less frequently your pump is going to run, which thereby extends the life of your pump motor. So this is a, it is a, a little bit of an investment up front, but it pays great dividends down the road um, in the life of your pumping system. The way a pressure tank works is there is a, a rubber or PVC bladder inside this steel tank. Uh, the, the pressure tank can be steel or fiberglass. And in, there, there's a, a bladder inside there that's made of, of rubber or PVC, flexible PVC, that the water in, injects into that bladder. Then uh, also inside this tank is pressurized air. So this is a 20 gallon pressure tank, uh, about, uh, about 13 gallons of that is pressurized air, and the last seven gallons is for pressurized water. The pressure tank has a Schrader valve on top to measure the air pressure in the tank. When you're first installing a pressure tank, you want to note the air pressure inside the tank and make sure it calibrates with your pressure switch. In this case, we had a 4060 pressure switch, so we wanted to make sure that the pressure tank is charged to 38 PSI. How the pressure tank works is the, the, pre, the pump will, will generate pressure, will pump into that, that flexible rubber or PVC bladder inside the inside the tank and it will inject water up to about seven gallons in the case of a 20 gallon pressure tank. Once that bladder fills it compresses the air inside the pressure tank which increases the air pressure. So now the the pump kicks off and when we go to wash our hands or flush a toilet or use a shower, instead of that pump kicking on every time we open a valve inside the house, in, uh, the water is going to be coming from that bladder that is now that, that now has its air, has its water pressure held by the air pressure in the tank. So the air, the increased air pressure is going to push against that bladder to send water out to the different fixtures inside your house. The pressure switch, which looks like this, this is a new pressure switch, is usually mounted to the pressure tank and it will read the pressure in the line and turn the pump on and off at certain pressure, at certain PSI marks. So in this case it's a 4060 switch, which means that the the switch is going to turn the pump on when the pressure reaches 40 PSI and it's going to turn the pump off when the pressure reaches 60 PSI, 40, 60. So again, instead of the, if we didn't have the pressure tank, this pump would, would turn on every time you open a, a, a valve inside the house. So instead of having that happen, what we're doing is we're letting this, this compressed air push down on the bladder and uh, send the water out to the fixtures. And we're going to wait for that water pressure to dip to 40 PSI, at which point the pressure switch will turn the pump back on and the pump will recharge that bladder inside the pressure tank. Now the advantage of bumping up to a larger pressure tank is that we have more pressurized uh, water on reserve. So 
that is going to, this is a 119 gallon tank. The, the pressurized water storage is about a third of the stated capacity of the tank. So that's about 40 gallons. So that bladder is going to fill 40 gallon with 40 gallons of water against roughly 70 gallons of compressed air. So we have 40 gallons of pressurized water in reserve that will meet the water demands in the house before that pump kicks on compared to the seven gallons of pressurized water reserve that we had in a 20 gallon pressure tank. So 40 gallons pressurized water here, seven gallons of pressurized water here. That's gonna, the larger pressure tank is gonna greatly reduce the frequency at which the pump cycles through a given day. And if we can reduce the, the, the cycles of the pump, we're gonna extend the life of the pump that much more. Roughly, it's gonna, conceivably it'll last about five times longer than it would with a 20 gallon pressure tank using this 119 gallon pressure tank. So the pump's gonna last a lot longer. If you lose power, you're gonna have 40 gallons roughly of pressurized water in reserve for a power outage without needing to kick on a generator. And you're gonna, you're gonna um, just create a much more electrically efficient system because it's gonna reduce the number of startup cycles on the pump. So if you're on a solar, uh, if you're on a house with solar panels, this is a great way to reduce your electrical footprint so that you can maximize your solar efficiency. So hopefully this is helpful explanation on why a pressure tank is such a key component to a pumping system.